Hey guys, welcome to Undertale. Uh, just a quick heads up, uh, I've already beat the game. I've beat Pacifist and Genocide. Um, I started again, but we're just gonna quickly reset. The name's already been chosen. Yeah, we're gonna continue with Orion. Um. So we're just starting the starting area real quick, and I'm gonna clear some things up. So I'm gonna try to do this series, upload a part once to twice a week. Um. This episode I'm going to shoot for about an hour, hopefully, and then I'll see if 30 minutes or an hour is better um, as far as file size goes and upload time so I can figure out what would be the easiest to get up. Um, as I mentioned, I beat Pacifist and Genocide, so we're going to do a Pacifist run first and then we are going to do a genocide so there will be some changes in this as opposed to as if it was completely fresh because of that fact uh, however I feel as if it's not important enough of a change to completely erase the game files some dialogues altered and some stuff at the end is altered, but I don't feel that it changes the experience so much that getting it fresh would be that much different. Um, that being said, I've recorded this a few times already. Um, That's why the last file had 30 minutes on it, and I've decided that I think the best way to go about this is to not voice over the characters and just kind of let them speak for themselves that way if you guys want to imagine the characters with a voice you can and that way me speaking doesn't interrupt with anything whether it be you know the tension of the story or the tone or anything like that because I might not be able to hit that spot on uh, so yeah that being said let us progress forwards and let us begin our journey into Undertale. So yeah, the reason Flowey um, says you do not have anything better to do is because we've done this so many times. I'm going to try to leave the text up for a little bit so you guys can read it just in case some of you guys are a little bit slower of readers. Alright, so... I 
do not mean to move that far forward. Uh, anyways. So, there are going to be periods in this game where I am quiet because of, uh, dialogue and whatnot. Um. I will try to commentate on the game the best I can. However. There are going to be parts when I'm quiet. Whether it be I'm focused or... You know, there's an important moment, and I'm trying to let you guys take it in. Um, I'm just going to say this now. If you guys haven't seen an Undertale Let's Play, or you guys don't know pretty much anything about the game, and you've just heard great things about it, uh, I recommend you play the game first. The game, when experienced new, is incredible incredibly better than experiencing it secondhand or experiencing it after you've already experienced it secondhand. Now, I gotta say, probably one of my biggest issues with this game, and one of the only things that I don't really like, is that uh, a lot of these beginning puzzles are not able to be solved by you. Of course, they still have this kind of stuff to tell you what to do, but either like this one is already marked or Toriel does it for you. Personally, I just feel that was a missed opportunity by Toby, but to each their own, of course, it is his game. So yeah, we are going for pacifist run, so we are going to be sparing everything we can, and by that I mean literally anything we run into. Um, I think the only thing you guys won't see in this let's play is me farming for Temi armor, because that takes about roughly an hour between dying enough times to lower the price and getting the gold for it. Um, as for the genocide run, you guys will see the story, but I won't show you guys the long grind to kill all the monsters because that can take a while because of the spawn rates getting lower the more monsters you've killed. Now, I gotta say, the thing that bothered me most about this first puzzle is that it sets it up like you're gonna be able to solve it. So you read this, the western room is the eastern room's blueprint. So this room's obviously the blueprint of this, and as we know from earlier, we need to stay on the path. So we've got a path here that's gonna be the blueprint for the upcoming room. We don't know what's in it. Continue forward, we can see spikes. However, Toriel does not move and let us progress. But Toriel solves it for us. I feel this would have been a great puzzle to do by yourself. You know, a good opening, but unfortunately not. And how did you been able to do this puzzle? Walking in the wrong space simply just does not allow you to walk there. So there's no real danger.
Now, the first time I did this, this part of the game was very off-putting because it felt like a Super Mario 64 in the staircase kind of thing where it was, hey, come to the end of the hallway, but really you're supposed to leave so she comes back to get you, but no. Okay, so, now we have the cell phone, so why don't we call Toriel? And of course, we are going to do all of the options from top to bottom. Now, my very first run through, I did not do this, but I'm glad I did in my genocide run. Now, the reason for this is if you call her mother and then do this. Then you know she casually brushes this off. However, if you go back to your cell phone you can do it again. You could be a fuck boy or a fuck female, whatever Frisk's gender neutrality designation is. Yes, we are an interesting child with a mommy kink now. Why she feels the need to explain it, I'm not entirely sure, considering there are explanations on the walls. But, oh well. It says, take one. Take a piece of candy? Yeah, of course we will. Um, I will read descriptions for stuff like this. Um, may or may not be the descriptions for the save points uh, depends if I'm already talking or not I know it's quiet the first one nope frog had hop close uh, I'm going to narrate the battle so ever uh, I decided to do that if I'm not already talking I found that was the best uh, course of action frog didn't understand what you said but he was flattered anyway and I also think just for I saw the I guess thoroughness of the let's play we're going to check all enemies at least once life is difficult for this enemy or for it now in my opinion this is the harder of his two attacks um, but Nonetheless, Frog is a very easy enemy to defeat, whether you spare him or fight him. Yes, we will be showing lots of mercy in this playthrough. Fortunately for that Froggit, we shall fulfill his wishes. 
And down the hole we go. Across the leaves. Now, the reason for that, that is one of the instances of altered dialogue. Uh, the reason she guesses at this and says she feels like she already knows me is because, well, she does. I haven't made a full game, I haven't played through the game fully. Um, I've actually reset this about two or three times now. And so that's why the name was already preset, uh, Butterscotch was already preset, Heart of Cinnamon and Butterscotch. I do actually much prefer butterscotch. Butterscotch is actually one of my favorite sweets. Yeah, there will be small changes like that in this um, playthrough. Ben has said, uh, as far as I am aware, there is nothing too major that has changed. So, if there is, you guys can point it out if I don't notice it right away. Um, or at all. You guys are free to point that kind of stuff out to me in the comments. And, no learning is fun and is good for us so we're going to try a uh, step too far forward like I said we're going to try to just breeze through these puzzles but uh, I took a step too much a pair of frog has hopped towards you know I've actually learned that although strategically in my opinion it's better to spare one and then the other but I have also found that you get some special little dialogue um, if you leave them both be. Now it's not anything too spectacularly different, but every once in a while you will get dialogue that is special to there being two froggets. This time we're not going to step that way. And through we go. And there's two. And we tripped into a line of mold smalls. Now, I have learned that mold smalls, any enemy that is automatically sparable will not give you gold upon sparing. However, we can Vivaciously attractive, but no brains. Oh, that's a shame. They will give you one gold upon... Ooh, this is a little more difficult because of them being two. They will give you a gold per everyone that you interact with. I guess they're all just going to do this. I just need to bob to and fro. So we're just gonna, you know, try to get as much gold as we can, so we can buy stuff. What a meaningful conversation that was. I'm just gonna bob to and fro. These attacks are easy to dodge. We're just gonna continue flirting. Because that's who we are. We are quite the flirters. Now we are going to- oh, what was that? Multiple weights pensively. Well, wait no longer. You are free, my friends. And now we run into the last rock. Unfortunately, is a pain in the butt. See what happens if I stand here and then 
pushed it this way. No, he just pushes us. Fantastic. And on the next room. This cheese has been here quite a long time. It's stuck to the table. Knowing the mouse might one day leave its hole and get the cheese, it fills you with determination. Now, I gotta say, the recurring my mouse hole is probably one of my favorite things. Um, I do find it kind of unfortunate that we have to force snaps to Bluke. Uh, it seems a bit... I don't know. It, it seems a bit more violent out of everything else we have to do in the pacifist run opposed to some of the late game stuff. Here comes Naps to Bluke. He doesn't have a sense of humor. Now, last time I did this I got myself son of a bitch. I got myself trapped and I did it again. Ah, uh, oh well. I'm really not feeling up to it right now, sorry. Poor naps to break. What do you got for me this time? I'm a son of a bitch. Hey, you dapper bluke. I honestly don't know why an absolute attack is so hard for me to dodge, but for some reason it is. Spider bake sale, all proceeds go to real spiders. We have finally made to bake sale. How much do we have? We've got 11. We have 7 gene away? But of course. Now, while that can be used later in the game to skip a boss fight, I am not going to do so. Just so you guys see as much as possible. Did you miss it? Spider bake sale down to the right. Come eat food made by spiders, for spiders, of spiders. things about this frog it is is you can repeat this conversation of course as you can with all conversations but by skipping through his stuff he gets disappointed that we are no different than his friend Now, I'm actually not recording in full screen just so I can kind of keep an eye on everything on my desktop. Uh, however, the quality should still come out good. Uh, if there are any issues, I apologize. I don't have the best recording software. I've only still got Hypercam 2. Can't afford anything, so it's kind of unfortunate. is very helpful um in my opinion this tip of knowing that when a monster's name pops up as yellow they're able to be spared is one of the most useful in the game because it lets you know when you can stop the fight so you don't have to take unnecessary damage and so you can move on as quickly as possible This is also foreshadowing, but is very well hidden. Uh, honestly, by the time I had gotten to this point in the game, I had actually forgotten about it and had to 
you know, make sure what I was doing was correct and actually a viable option. last. Ah, oh, I love maps to Luke. And yeah, now we're going to go fight some Vegetoids for gold. Vegetoid came out of the earth. Let us check on Vegetoid. Serving size, one monster. Not monitored by the USDA. This is part of a complete breakfast. Death carrots. Beautiful. Now this fight, my first time around, actually took me a long time to figure out because I kept trying to talk to him. I did not know that you had to ask for dinner. I figured dinner would, like the devourer, upset him and eat him. That is not the case. So yes, whenever a monster's name is yellow, or whenever the spare option is yellow, they are able to be spared. Ah, uh, Magosp. Now here we have a Magosp and a Moltsmall. One of the interesting things about these uh, characters is that Magosp will only attack you if there are other enemies around. Ooh, we could not get out of that one. So now that we have interacted with Mold Small, so we can get the gold. We are going to spare Mold Small so that Magosp will no longer attack us. Now, does this. I'm not entirely sure if. It seems evil, but it's just with the wrong I'm not sure if touching him hurts us. Oh god, yeah. That's a no-go. Oh, I was not aware that I had a feeling it would. Um, but yeah, now we know for sure. Knowing for sure is always a good thing in my book. Um, uncertainties are a little bit unnerving, and just knowing whether to avoid something or not can help, especially in later fights if you get caught with a gasp. Um, you can know to avoid that if need be. Although he doesn't move, so it really shouldn't be any reason to run into him. No, regardless. Which is useful, I suppose. And we should spare. Now, we don't quite have enough yet. I uh, do not. Well, actually, no, I believe it's only 14G for a spider cider. We're just going to go ahead and flirt with Mozma. Ah, oh, yes. A bit easier to dodge this time. Hmm, cha cha cha. Now, I believe we still have to interact with Magosp to get gold from him. Which is not that big of a deal since he will no longer try to hurt us in that state. We're going to go back to the spider big sale as long as stop buying get our health refilled since we did end up taking it down. We're just gonna grab the cider first. No, I can't go that way. 18G in the web. Wow, we got exactly enough with that. That is actually kind of surprising. I thought it was only 14 or 15. I'm glad we had um, we fought that Mold's Maul and Magosp, otherwise we would not have had enough. Now that we have one of each of those and we have a monster candy, we should be good to progress through the game. 
because other than this, the only healing items we will really need are the bicycles and the cinnamon buns. Ah, oh, another gospel, another mold small. I do understand the world a little bit better now. Oh, oh, oh this is not too hard. Bear and swing your arms, baby. Ah, uh, and now we should talk to Magas. Hiya. Hiya there, Magas. Uh, I could be pronouncing his name wrong. There will be some that I'm sure that I will pronounce wrong. I apologize in advance for any of that. Let's check this sign. The far door is not an exit. It simply marks a rotation and perspective. Now this is actually something really good to remember because all these rooms do is rotate. They all stay the same essentially. If you can read this, press the blue switch. Now we don't see the blue switch unfortunately. But, because we know that it's just a rotation, based on the other room we can guess where it is, and also since we see the red and green switches but not the blue, it is a pretty safe assumption to check the other pillar that has nothing with it. And surprise, surprise, as we shall see in a moment, that is where our beloved switch is. It's a switch. Press it. Now, of course, when they're behind them, they don't say which one. Because that would be given away if you can read this. Press the red switch. Pretty easy, you know, you just walk over here. It's a switch. You press it. Yeah, you press it. You got it right. Um, excuse me? That was weird. I don't really know what's going on there. Try to start a battle and immediately uh, we cross rooms. Okay, there we go. The Vegetoid and a Gosp. Um, personally, I think one of the worst combos early game is a double Vegetoid. Uh, simply because it's very hard to know where the green is going to come from, especially if they each do a separate attack. You really just have to wait to even see what kind of attack you should be going for to catch the green. The switch, press it to buy, of course, you are clicking the sound. And that means we have successfully done this. Now we shall move on forward into this little side room where we find a frogget. interesting thing about this is we see a city but based on where the runes are uh, personally I can't figure out what city this is supposed to be nor can I figure out where she went because this seems to be some kind of roof rooftop so it's a little bit confusing but oh well let us continue forward. If anyone knows or has a theory about that, feel free to tell me. time this old tree grows any leaves, they fall right off. Not mean to click that again. Poor tree. Seeing such a cute, tidy house in the ruins gives you determination. Unfortunately, we can't read that sign.
just go ahead and investigate it. Look at these cool toys. They don't interest you at all. Oh man. An empty photo room. It's really dusty. Oh, yep, that's right. And here's a box of kid shoes in disparity of sizes. Let's go ahead and leave the light off and I'll save. Changes the music. I never noticed this before. Music actually seems kind of sinister with the light off. Room under renovations, and here we see it's you. Yes, it is me. It's Toriel's diary. Read the circle passage. And you read the passage. Why did the skeleton want a friend? Because she was feeling bonely. The rest of the page is filled with jokes of a similar caliber. And we shall find out why fairly soon. Just read your little bucket of snails. Ah, the cactus. Truly the most sunday of plants. Ah, cacti are actually some of my favorite plants. Peek inside. Scandalous. It's Toriel's sock drawer. But yes, I quite enjoy cacti. It's an encyclopedia of subterranean plants. You open to the middle. Typha. A group of wetland flowering plants with brown oblong seed pods. Known more commonly as water sausages. Definitely bigger than a twin sized bed. Yes, good observation. Toriel's small chair. Its name is Cherio. I did not know the chair had a name. You learn something new every time. Nothing in there for us right now. Let's investigate this bookcase. This book's so worn, I must have been read many times. Inside is an old calendar from the beginning of. 201X. And the ends of the tools have been filed down to make them safer. But are they still as useful? We may never know. It's a history book. Here's a random page. Trapped behind the barrier and fearful of further human attacks, we retreated. Far, far into the earth we walked until we reached the cavern's end. This was our new home, which we named Home. As great our king is, he's pretty lousy at names. The fire isn't burning hot, just pleasantly warm. You could put your hand inside. Good thing we don't, though. Okay, so nothing like that. There's a some white fur stuck in the drain. For some reason, there's a brand name chocolate bar in the fridge. Inside the cupboard are cookie cutters for gingerbread monsters. What a nice smell. Too hot to eat, though. The stove top is very clean. Toriel must use fire magic instead. Which is kind of interesting because we haven't really been exposed to different kinds of magic yet. Um, unless the monster attacks are considered magic, then really the only thing we've seen is the beginning where she attacks Flowey. But... You know, that's beside the point. Hello there, little one. Ah, oh, yes. Ah. Uh, I figured this out the hard way in my last run. If you refuse to take a nap, you don't get the pie, which is very, very saddening. I wouldn't say it's a disadvantage, um, a huge one. Having the pie does give you a pretty good advantage, especially in the genocide run. You definitely want it for that, but not getting it isn't the end of the world. Um, but yes. 
Ah, that was something that I didn't learn the hard way. We're gonna turn our light off. We're gonna take a nap. We found a slice of butterscotch cinnamon pie. Ba -da -da -da. And let us continue on our journey now. Yes, when can we go home? Victoria, you really need to tell us how to go home. Yes, I could have guessed that. Wait here at this chair. Where are you going, Toriel? Hmm, these are some spe suspicious looking stairs. I wonder what's down here. There's Toriel. But if she does that, how will she get groceries? We could go over and we could go home now. Interestingly enough, this point in the game, of course, me not knowing a lot about Undertale, I knew how the combat worked and all that stuff, uh, but I knew nothing really of the story other than what my friend told me um, about the plot. I didn't know any characters, however, I didn't know any names, I just knew what the monsters were trying to do and what we are trying to do. So, Asgore being highlighted in red really makes it to where he seems to be an enemy from the very beginning. Ah, ignore warnings. Thank you, Steam. I know broadcasting has enabled you. You've already told me this. Torio blocks the way. Let's check on Torio. 80 attack and 80 defense. She knows the best for me. Just... Torio looks through you. Now... Remember when I said, or the frog said, you may have to spare someone even though their name is yellow. Well, by this point in the game, I had already forgotten that. And I talked to Toriel for about an hour trying to spare her and could not figure out what I was doing wrong. I'm gonna move over to this safe spot here. Toriel prepares a magical deck. It's no good, Toriel. I have my safe spot. Oh, I made a doof. Toriel's acting aloof. Yeah, I acted pretty aloof right there, too. 
back to our safe spot. What are we doing, Toriel? That was an excellent question. Attack will run away. I mean... No, I did a dumb again. We usually get through this without getting hit. Uh, aside from some beginning attacks like this. Uh, but yeah, I usually don't ever get hit by this. Stop it, Ron. Stop. Yeah, see. Uh, Toriel's acting aloof. I'm no longer acting aloof. Basically, all we just do is that. You can do a circle, or you can do like a first time. Toriel takes a deep breath. Go away. Well, I would happily abide. Honestly, I feel that's the easiest way is to cross it. Now, I do not believe Toriel will attack. I was wrong. Toriel will still attack us at this point. We should be okay, though. Yep, from now on, we are okay. Once you get to this point, Toriel will no longer attack us. Toriel's attacks will avoid you because she no longer wants to hurt you. Because we have proven that we will not hurt her. Say goodbye to Toriel, unfortunately. For now, even with the power of cell phones, nobody will pick up. Another Super Mario 64 S corridor. That fortunately is not never ending, because that would be horrible. And who do we have here? This is also foreshadowing to multiple parts of the game, actually. That is also another subtle hit, hit, hint, to the story. Um, those of you who have played the game before, um, especially if you've done the True Basifist run, you know what this is hinting at. And 
and this is where the game officially starts to pick up. And we get into the meat of things. And here we are. What a beautiful little place. There's a camera hidden in the bushes. Now, that is one thing I've never managed to figure out. Um, there are cameras hidden in snow, or not really uh, snowed in, uh, but between the ruins and snowed in, there are cameras set up. But there aren't really cameras anywhere else that we discover, and it's never really said who places them to my knowledge. Try and check the trees along here. Stick broke. Who could that have been? Oh, I did not know that he rushed if you went back. Interesting. I do not believe there will be anything in these trees. When there appear to be footsteps behind us. And that is another instance of altered dialogue because normally Sans will say human don't you know how to greet a pal but we are to do know how to greet him ah here we go another instance of altered dialogue yeah hey, uh. Good old Sands. Yes, this is our famous comic Sands the Skeleton. Probably the most famous Undertale character, even more popular than Frisk themselves. And behind the lamp, we shall go. Now, personally, I gotta see Sans and Papyrus as the skeleton versions of Drake and Josh. one moment guys all right guys sorry about that I had to do something really quick but I am back
one, yes. That is the introduction of two of my favorite characters, Sans and Papyrus. Sans probably being my favorite, uh, Papyrus definitely being in my top five. And that's all Sans has to say to us. Some sort of checkpoint or sentry station. There are bottles of ketchup, mustard, and relish sitting inside. Just a conveniently shaped lamp. I do not believe either of those say anything. And so... With this, we shall end the episode. Next time, we will continue on our adventure and go see what Sans has in store for us. I hope you guys are enjoying watching, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.